I can hear me. With your permission, I'd like to try a different mic. Is this one on? Yes. Someone dial in, please. Would you please? We'd appreciate that. Well, we have many loyal followers, <laughs> and we don't want to disappoint them. <laughs> For those of you who can hear who are not currently with us, the technician is saying there's some kind of challenge with the microphones. Are we on testing? Thank you very much. And thank you for everyone's patience. Our technician has just given us the go ahead. So good afternoon, everyone. This is the Monday, June 17th, 2019 meeting of the Education Committee of the Board thank of Thank you very much. And thank you for everyone's patience. Our Meeting of the Board of Vocational Nursing and Psychiatric Technicians. We want to call this meeting officially to order. And we will claim the time of start at 2.10. Want to introduce the committee members. And we'll start from my far right. Dr. Carol Mountain. Ken Maxey. And I'm Bernice Bastin Martinez. I'm the chair of this committee and a public member and board vice president. Staff, if you would kindly introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Marie Cordero, supervising nursing education consultant. And to the table over here, I have. Um, Faye Silverman, nursing education consultant, Jessica Gomez, nursing education consultant, and to the back in the green is Jerry, Geraldine Marciano, our analyst. And our legal support. Thank you, Madam Chair. Kenneth Swenson, <laughs> Staff Council 3. 
Thank uh, you. Counsel for the board, sorry. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we want to start with the Pledge of Allegiance, if everyone will stand, and if um, Mr. Maxey will lead us. Pledge of Allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. all. Thank you. We also have several schools present. We want to recognize those schools. Northwest College, thank you for being here. Glendale uh, Career College, thank you for also being here. And also representative of Northwest College. Next agenda item, we will get an update on the Brightwood College Teach Out. Hi. Hi. I just wanted to just give you a bit. Turn your mic on. Is that on? Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so I just wanted to give a very brief update, and it's very, very brief. Um, on the Brightwood Teach Out because I know this committee is very interested in what is going on. And so for the San Diego campus I got um, from Sherry Sartiski, who's the program director. Their first full-time class of 16 students completed the program on May 30th. Their first part-time class of 16 students completed on June 13th. All 32 of those students will be participating in a graduation ceremony on July 20th and will be preparing to take their NCLEX exam via a HESI live review. And that they would be then expected to take their state boards in sometime in July. So hopefully we'll be seeing some results from that. Um, the Van Nuys campus, Judith Hodson, who's the program director, um, they have two full-time classes. The first full-time class graduated on June 13th. There was 22. Again, their NCLEX review um, begins on June 24th, so just next week, and expect that these grads will take their state boards in July. They also will have a, a HESI live review right on their campus to help them prepare for their NCLEX. Their second class is currently in level two. They're 16 students, and they're working hard towards graduation. Um, just a little highlight, I thought this was interesting, you might like this. Um, Northwest Collie Mobile Simulation Lab was in the Van Nuys campus on May 17th and the students were able to access the simulation mobile van and were able to work with simulators in the area of obstetrics and gain hands-on experience with these simulators. That's it. Any questions? Based on your report, can we assume staff, board staff, are pleased? Oh, we're delighted. I got a huge, a big report. I just tried to condense it to the things that I thought might be pertinent in the interest of time, but they were really moving forward with everything that they had said they were going to do, and everybody's been positive and helpful. The students are excited. Um, so I, I'm, I'm very pleased. Yes. Yeah, it's, it is awesome, Carol. That's right. Thank, Thank you. you. Are there other questions? Thank you very much. Next item is a discussion and possible action to make recommendations to the board regarding consideration of placement on provisional approval for Northwest College Riverside. We see our NEC, Faye Silberman. Will you give us an update and an overview, please? Oh, there you go. Hi. So I am presenting Northwest College Riverside Vocational Nursing Program for consideration of placement on provisional approval. Um, on February 20th, 
I'd received several emails and uh, complaints from previous employees and current employees. The employees had said that there was classes in session that the board and the NEC were not aware of. They further detailed that there was not pediatric, suffice of pediatric clinical sites, that although the school had contracts signed, they were not attending those pediatric sites. So I took it upon myself to call the pediatric sites before I sent out a letter for information to the school. The, I spoke to, I believe, all but one of their pediatric sites, and they all confirmed what I was told by the previous employee and the current employee via the email that they were not attending pediatric clinicals at those sites. I sent a letter to the director of nursing, the program director, Adnan, um, and then he responded. And when he responded, the material that he had sent to me was not true and correct. He sent me documents that they were in pediatric clinicals that I had already called and I knew that they were not in those clinicals. I told him that I'd already spoken to all but one of the clinicals and that I already knew that this information was not true and correct and I gave him an opportunity to correct his sheets that he turned in. And then at that time I was able to get a hold of the last pediatric clinical site to confirm that they as well were not at that site as well. I did find out that they were, that one of the sites Queen of the Valley, that they were approved for a pediatric site for four students, and they were also approved for a mother-baby unit, which was, I believe, six, six and six, six for a well baby and six for OB. And from what students had said, that they were going to the well baby for their pediatric experience, which is in violation of 2881, because there was no sick child um, available for them to meet the sick child objectives. If you look, my recommendations are to place the school on provisional approval for a two-year period starting August 16th, which is the date of when you would present it to the board. Um, I'm also asking for a complete report in six months, no later than February 16th of 2020 as well as in 18 months, no later than February 16th of 2021. I'm not going to read all of that. Um, the published exam statistics confirm that there's been a decline of 4% uh, above the state average to 12% below in the last few months. The program, when given an opportunity to address the multiple complaints, produced documents which were not true and correct. The board representative had already spoken to several of the pediatric facilities. All the facilities stated that Northwest College Riverside was not scheduled to have pediatric clinical experience at their facility. And even after presenting the program director with this information, the second copies of information of the clinical assignment sheets did not accurately reflect where the students would be going. On September 13th, uh, this program was approved for ongoing admissions. It was rescinded by the acting executive officer. Just prior to that board decision, uh, this program started two cohorts of students. They claimed that they were following their approval to start classes. But when I went back to documents, which I had from since I've been their NEC since 2016 when I came onto the board, I was able to confirm that both classes, one was started 10 days prior to the graduation and the other class, which they state replaced a specific class, had already been replaced. So they actually started two classes without my knowledge or without the board's knowledge prior to this September 13th decision by the executive, acting executive officer to rescind the ongoing admissions. Um, when I did a site visit, and this is one of the things that the current employee told me, is that the program director requested that all documentation be taken off the bulletin boards or the boards for these two cohorts. So they started, and they've now since graduated. Both cohorts have 
excuse me, that were started um, prior to the se September 2017 decision have now graduated. So they are now currently testing. Um, I have now since spoken to Totally Kids, which I approved recently, like within the last month, uh, and they are a pediatric site for them. And Totally Kids did confirm that they had sites for class 101 and 102. So there is class 103, 104, 105, 106, which I still do not have approved clinical sites verified. I know that they have signatures on contracts, but when I call the sites, they've not been able to confirm this. Now, as soon as this week, I was given additional information, and I went through that additional information for these pediatric sites, and I actually took the time and I emailed, uh, her name is Tina, I can't remember her last name, but she's the person that they deal with over at Totally Kids in Riverside, and she emailed me back and said that class 103, 4, 5, and 6 were not on her schedule. So currently there's four classes in session that there is not pediatric sick child available to. And I don't think anything else, probably you can ask me whatever you want, but I think that's probably the main crux of everything. want to make sure we're hearing correctly. As of in the last several days, you did a follow-up check and there was not substantial evidence of any correction. They made two corrections previously of the mm -hmm. eight, so they have six outstanding. One of the six is that there is no pediatric sites. There was, there was not substantial uh, evidence from where they're telling me they're going to send their students for of the six cohorts they have they only have confirmed for two of the six cohorts and just for my you. and just for my clarity you said that there's no sick child classes of, of correct available? pediatrics the regulation 2881 requires sick child so they have an OB site where they can get some well baby but not sick child now, Totally Kids, the site that I approved about a month ago, is Sick Child. It's a long-term ventilator, Sick Child. There's one in San Fernando Valley, and there's one in the Riverside area. And they've been approved as a site for, this for the school. But when I call or email with specific dates and say, are these dates on your calendar, the answer was no. Now, I know that they were working on it toward the end of last week to try to get the clinicals of 103 and 104 approved because that would be through the end of 2019. The problem with what Totally Kids does is that they will not consider the last two classes they have until October, November, December of this year for next year because that's when they put out their master calendar. And the reason I know that is because when I was a director of nursing, I used to deal with Totally Kids in San Fernando Valley. And they historically get all the schools to give them the dates they want, and then they put out a calendar somewhere between October and December for the following year. So for my clarification, there's 105 and 106 at this time have no pediatric 103, clinicals. 103, 104, 105, and 106. So there's six. four there's of them. There's four cohorts that currently do not have sick child. But if for further clarification, my own mind, they said originally they had pediatric sites, but when you called, there were never any students there. So one of the sites stopped having pediatrics. I believe that was Kyvers or Riverside, and uh, the program director has since taken that site off. Okay. He's cleaned up his list and taken off the sites that say they have no more peds. But right now they have two clinical sites for pediatrics. One is and I'm probably not saying this right, but clinic familia, it's clinics. And the clinics allow one student a day or two students a day to go for pediatric experience, and they do have that one. And they currently have Totally Kids, which will take 10 students, and it's a long-term, basically a ventilator-specific facility. 
um, and they're on their calendar for the groups of 101 and 102. That's it. That's it. Not three, four, five, or six. Thank you. Okay. Is there a representative from the school? Would you please approach? Absolutely. Please come down to the mic. If you will kindly introduce yourself and your position with the school. Good afternoon. My name is uh, Adnan al and I am the director of the nursing program for Riverside Campus. Have you received this report? Yes, I did. Do you have any comments for us? Uh, yes, I, uh, uh, thank, I, I would like to thank Mrs. Silverman for all her comments and the report. And uh, I just need to update about the uh, pediatric rotations for totally kids. We've been in touch with them about getting the confirmation for the rest of the year. And uh, uh, Friday last week, we were able to confirm September and October. And uh, she promised us to get back to us today to confirm November and December. And this will cover classes 103 and 104. Uh, once I get the final confirmation, I'm going to update Mrs. Silverman of the confirmation of, uh, and I will send her the pediatric tracking forms for the rest of the year for classes 103 and 104. So this, uh, this might be uh, either tomorrow or Wednesday. Uh, we have submitted the request for the entire 2020. And they told us that it's still early for the confirmation, but we might get it towards the end of this year. And this will take care of classes 105 and 106 uh, throughout 2020. So I will keep Mrs. Silverman updated about every uh, uh, updates we get or every confirmation we get from the Totally Kids uh, Hospital. Uh, regarding the, the other facilities, we, we do have approval from the county, LA County Hospitals and Harbor UCLA and Martin Luther King uh, for uh, OB and pediatric. Uh, those are uh, on hold waiting for the county hospitals to approve our faculty to start teaching over there because it's a lengthy process and they deal with the faculty very much like with their own employees. The approval process takes about three months and uh, once we get the approval by them then we will get the confirmation to start using the specialties in the county hospitals for uh, the OB and PEDS. And uh, once we get this confirmed, then uh, I will also update uh, Ms. Fay about this. Uh, also, we have Kaiser Fontana that we have the approval, but we are on the waiting list because of the competition uh, among the schools. And uh, if we manage to get the access, then I will also send the updates uh, to the board. Uh, spe mainly for the specialty rotations. We have also submitted the application for the mobile sim lab for the specialties for OB and PEDS. And uh, once we get the approval from Mrs. Silverman, then we will be able to start using uh, the mobile sim lab uh, for our uh, OB and pediatric uh, training. Just a reminder that until the staff receives Yes. the appropriate documentation of what you're telling us about. We can only act on the information that the staff has reviewed. Yes, I understand. Um, would you also please address the differentiation in the written reports that were received uh, against what was the actual reality? How could that possibly happen? Uh, regarding which point, if you, if you don't mind? It's um, my understanding that uh, the staff received uh, some information and concerns, and when that was followed up, the, it was contradictory to written information that was received. It would be the pediatric clinical... I'm sorry? Form. It was the pediatric clinical tracking forms. Yes. And, yeah, because those were uh, the, the future schedules and uh, 
because the, the, the tracking forms uh, reflects the, the future months of each class. And uh, I think the mistake that I did, that I've put the projected uh, rotations that we, we, uh, we are looking to get on the tracking forms, but they were not finally confirmed yet. And this, is, this was the mistake uh, that I did. Uh, so that's why I, uh, I'm, once I get the final confirmation from Totally Kids, I'm going to submit the pediatric tra tracking forms for the future rotations, which is based on the current actual approved rotations. And once we get more rotations approved, then I will keep updating those tracking forms and send it to Faye. I guess I'm still a bit confused. Um, this is not the first report that this site has sent. Uh, so there could be some difference of how to report. Your program has been in existence for a number of years. And this is the first time, uh, on my, based on my information, that something of this nature has occurred. Uh, what? Yes. How did that happen? Uh, yeah, the, the program uh, started from the year of 1999. It was uh, under a different name, and then uh, we, we took it over in 2003 under Northwest College. Uh, previously, we had a plenty of pediatric sites like Kaiser Riverside, like Parkview. Uh, we also had the Hemet Valley in, in certain time of, of time. Uh, they started uh, shutting down their pediatric units one by another because of the low census and because of some financial problems. And uh, that's why we lost the access of those really wonderful pediatric sites over the time. And this is what led to this problem that we are facing now. We did find alternatives like the LA County hospitals uh, Kaiser Fontana, but uh, we are just waiting for uh, the approval of our faculty and getting the access at Kaiser Fontana so that we can confirm those rotations. Hopefully in the near future we will be able to get the access. So we've lost some sites. We are working on getting the alternative. We also built our mobile sim lab and we submitted the application and once we get the approval, uh, this would really help a lot because we are looking for almost like 50% of our pediatric uh, rotations done in the mobile sim lab, which is the high fidelity mannequins. Just to make a note about the sim lab, there's a process to be approved for simulation, if, whether it's a mobile lab or a stationary lab, and they submitted uh, the hours because it involves curriculum revision as well because their curriculum has to re reflect the mobile sim lab and the mobile or the sim lab with objectives, etc. So at this point the hours have been approved or have been looked at and the director who's uh, spearheading the project, which is one of the other directors, she's submitted the IP for the first term, but they I have to go through that term, and then they have to do term two, and then term three, and then term four. So it's a process, and it's just in the middle of that process. So I don't expect yeah. it to come out like in the next week or so. It's going to be a while before that process is complete. Thank you. Other committee members? Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, my first question uh, for Mr. Abu Mazen um, is um, are there has there been some cohorts or graduates that have not received the sufficient training that are now practicing today? Uh, no, the, in, the, uh, uh, in the old IP, uh, we, we only had 24 hours for pediatric and 24 hours for OB. So for the previous classes, we, would be ab we, were, we were able to cover the required OB and pediatric uh, rotations. With the new IP, uh, this was revised and uh, it became 40 hours for OB and 40 hours of pediatric, uh, which is in the cohorts 103, 104 and moving forward. There is a question about the two cohorts that graduated without our knowledge. 
I'm assuming they were on the old IP. I'm not 100% sure since sure. I never saw any paperwork on them, nor have I ever seen where they went. But what I was informed by a previous employee and a current employee is that they did their pediatric rotation at that OB site where there was mother-child. But I just don't have documentation one way or the other to prove or to disprove that. But I do have questions whether those two classes got sick child or not. And is there a way to follow up with, with those particular cohorts to find out if they did? Or how, what, what is the next it step? It would be to? a matter of having to call the students. And that's, I mean, I, I could, but I just chose that there were so many other violations that were on the table. I just didn't think that was a wise productivity of my time. I mean, I still question it, it's, but it's not a violation because I can't prove or disprove it. I only put in violations what I can prove. Okay. And then my second question, Mr. Alvin Wilson, is um, around, you mentioned a lot of the LA County partnerships that you're, you're creating. Yes. Um, and I heard one in the Inland Empire or Riverside County, which was Fontana. Are, are there other Kaiser, look Kaiser Fontana. Oh, Kaiser Fontana. It's not but, a uh, county hospital. Are, but yeah, but are, are there others in the Inland Empire in particular that you are reaching out to to create that partnership? Because it's a yeah, those are two big counties, uh, Riverside and San Bernardino. We've hired a, a liaison for the county hospitals who was a, a previous uh, administrator at the Harbor UCLA. And she's, she's helping us in getting uh, those uh, in action uh, for the future. Uh, for Harbor UCLA and MLK, we are currently using those for medical surgical rotations. And uh, we are waiting for uh, the OB and PEDS faculty to be approved by them so that we can start using the specialties. The next project is we are going to apply for uh, San Bernardino and Riverside uh, county hospital to get contract with them so that we can start using their county hospitals also because we believe that there are strong potentials among those hospitals and once we got the LA County it would be a lot easier for us to expand to Inland Empire and our next target now will be San Bernardino and Riverside counties. More further questions for me? Thank you. Dr. Mountain? No questions at this time. Based on the information that staff has reviewed, are there any changes in the recommendations as they have been presented to this committee? No, because it's the responsibility of the program or the program director, which it may be, to present data so that the NEC slash the board has documentation that each program or for each cohort has resources. And the problem is, is that even if he comes up with the documentation later this week that would provide documentation that class 103 and 104 have adequate resources until MLK and LA Harbor are complete with all of their orientation, which could be anywhere from now until three months. I mean, I don't have that and I don't know and or at the end of the year when Totally Kids gives us the schedule for the following year, they don't have documentable proof or documentable evidence that they have pediatric sites for class 105 and 106. So my recommendation for provisional status would remain the same. Thank you. Any further comment from the committee? I would entertain a motion. The recommended language for the motion would be to accept and approve the report and recommendations of the NAC and to recommend approval by the full board. Uh, Madam Chair, I recommend to accept the recommendations of the NEC uh, pending approval of the whole board. Second. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? I guess I do have to make one observation. There's some serious issues here, and particularly uh, cohorts that, if I'm hearing correctly, staff learned about. We also see 
the scores going not up, not stabilizing, but going down. I'm wondering if two years is sufficient time. Just an observation. My thought process was is I could evaluate them in two years and to determine whether we needed to extend it for another two years. You know, but that means you will see him again in two years at the board because he, he and I both will have to come back in two years to remove and or it'll be a, a recommendation of one way or the other in two years. So in two years, the board will get to hear what he has done in two years versus waiting for four years if I was to extend it to a longer period of time. And I thought that would be a prudent thing is for the board to be able to speak to both me and to the program director in two years to justify one way or the other. Thank you. Call for a vote based on the motion. Madam Chair, can and we have public comment, public. please? Thank you. <laughs> Is there public comment based on the motion before this committee? Please come forth and identify yourself, if you please. Thank you. My name is Baylor Mason, the CEO for uh, Northwest Colleges and uh, Glendale Career College. And um, I, yeah, I just wanted to, to, to add that um, as a whole, our system of colleges is committed to rectifying what Ms. Uh, Silverman has identified um, comprehensively. Um, um, Ms. Silverman is, you know, kind of aware of, of um, you know, where we plan to go with uh, overall leadership of our nursing programs, um, review of, you know, how grids are submitted to Ms. Fay for classes for future. And I did want to, uh, you know, make a comment about our commitment to making sure we have the resources for every student that graduates. Um, OB and pediatrics happens to occur in term four. Uh, and so some of the cohorts that the, board, the education committee has heard about haven't rotated through. And while um, we accept our accountability and responsibility in the documentation that goes from our organization to the nursing education consultant, hence the board, um, we, we are committed to ensuring that, that our students in the future rotations that have not gotten to pediatrics will receive the sick child experience through clinical sites like Totally Kids and any others that may come online soon. Uh, so I just wanted to, to uh, make those comments and to let the board know that we're committed to rectifying the situation uh, up to um, you know, and you know, whatever it takes to get these other clinical sites online. Uh, hence the hiring of uh, the, the person that is, that's a former actually administrator of the t whole entire LA County system of hiring that is helping us with those rotations as well as her intent to recruit other Inland Empire County facilities as well. Um, and we thank the board for uh, the consideration of that. We understand we have work to do uh, to regain the, the credibility of, of, of our program and the board. And um, we have very healthy programs, you know, in, in our system um, that are, you know, working well with Ms. Silverman. And uh, we're, we're looking into exactly uh, what you stated is what happened here. Thank you for allowing me those comments. Thank you. Any further public comment? Seeing none, call for a roll call vote, starting with my far right. I vote to approve. Aye. I approve. Let the record show it was unanimous. We'll be making a recommendation to the full board at the August meeting. Thank you, Ms. Silberman. Thank you. Next on our agenda, a discussion and possible action to make recommendations to the board 
regarding consideration of placement on provisional approval of the University of Antelope Valley, formally, is my agenda correct? Hmm, that's a good one. I think it, that's a typo. Formally Antelope Valley Medical College, is that? It's Antelope Valley College, University of Antelope Valley, formerly yep. Antelope Valley Medical College is what it is. I'm right. Thank you. Formerly Antelope Valley Medical College, Lancaster, vocational nursing program. Ms. Silberman, yes. will you address this, please? Sure. Um, first, I'd like to say that I spoke to the program director, and she's not going to be here today. She, uh, we spoke... Uh, after I went through all the material, and there was three uh, violations. Uh, the first two she has completely fixed, even though the report does not reflect as such, because it was done. Uh, she gave me the paperwork a week and a half ago, and then I reviewed the paperwork last week, so um, it's not reflecting on my initial report, because you get it before that point. The only uh, violation that remains is her pass rates and she is aware of the pass rates, and she's aware that she has now had eight quarters of low pass rates. Um, and so she said she accepts the provisional. She was going to send me an email, but I never got it to bring it, so I just want to let you know that. Um, what happened was is that this program had the director, and then the director stepped down as the director, and they hired a different director. And then what happened was while the other director was in in control, the NCLEX pass rates tanked, everything that they were doing tanked, so they got rid of that director and then hired the old director back. So this is, uh, LV Enchata is the original director of this program. So she has put things in place, but, and, and she knew, you know, two years ago that the program was in trouble and the pass rates were not good, but the problem is, is that what she was doing is just a little too little, a little too late, and it's not really showing reflective. When I did an analysis, when she submitted her paperwork, I will say that um, the last class, that the last quarter, which is, is the last quarter on the report? So I just got the last quarter results, and so just the quarterly results, she's up to 80%. So it just appears as if right now all the stuff that this director has done for the last two years is just starting to work. But in my report, it says that it is, appears that it, it's not reflective of working, and the reason being is up until a couple weeks ago I didn't have the last quarter of results. So my, my recommendation is not going to change. She has eight quarters of low pass rates. The program, my recommendation is to go on to provisional status. We need to keep a close eye on this school. We need to work with her um, and to continue the activities that she's currently doing and to see if we need to implement any additional activities to help with the NCLEX. Um, my report, um, obviously, to place on provisional and then a report in six months as well as in 18 months so that I can keep tabs on the program and help her in any way possible. Just a question, based on your statement and the new information you have, will there be an amended report with that additional information before the next board meeting in August? My recommendation will not change. My plan was not originally to change my report, but I will be more than happy to uh, verbally present to the board like I am here that it is just now starting to turn around but one quarter is not what we go by we go by a four rolling quarter so therefore my report is solid and I'll be more than glad to say that I'm just now starting to see a little bit of light at the end of the rainbow but it's not going to change my recommendation thank you questions comments from the committee just a quick question. Do you know if she's put anything in place, um, such as HESI yeah, or... Yeah, she has. She's yeah. been working... She has a whole bunch of different Thanks. stuff that she's put into effect. Um, in fact, I think there's a chart yeah. that I put into my report on page... 
because I actually went out there to see the facility since they were having so much issues. Um, it may have been the last report prior to this. It's not physical here. Yeah, so um, in the report prior, I had a chart um, and it basically demonstrated what, when the cohort started and what, you know, and, and what term the students were in that the implementations took place. Because when she came back, she implemented across the board. So some of the students were in term four, which didn't get as much. Some were in term three, which got a little more. Some were in term two, and some were in term one. So obviously the ones that were in term one and term two got more. Uh, and so the cohort 29 that graduated on 319, got all of the implementations. So that, and the cohort that graduated on 818, which is now testing, they got the implementations in term two. But all the ones that have previously been testing did not get all of the implementations. And so the, the class that graduated three eight, uh, of 19, so January, February, March 19, so March, April, May, so June, July, August, somewhere along in there, you're gonna see that class take a huge jump, I'm hoping, because they got benefit of all the implementations that she did. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? If you want, before the board meeting, I can actually get the list of what she implemented. So if you were to ask me that, I would have that specific interventions. I can do that for you guys. That'd be it awesome. Be, yeah. Thank you. The, because the board is not present to hear what you said. Right, and I and like I said, I'm more. I'm going to be at the board meeting, but I will be more than glad to repeat what I just said. But I will put together a list of implementations that she's implemented, so you can see that it was in the the report just previous to this report, but it's not in this report. Thank you, Ms. Silverman. You're welcome. Any further question, comments? I will entertain a motion. I move to accept the NEC's recommendation pending the vote of the board. I second that. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? So for, for clarification, it's um, to accept and approve the report and recommendation of the NEC and to recommend approval by the board. Is that correct? That is correct. Any further comment from the committee? Seeing none, a call for public comment. Just an FYI, uh, the director of nursing or the program director will be at the board meeting. Thank you. Receiving no public comment, we'll call for roll call votes starting with my far right. Agree. Yes. I'm a yes. Let the record show it's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Silverman. There are no additional cases for review. At this point, we move on to item eight of the agenda. Time for public comment on items not on the current agenda. Yes, please. And if you will again identify yourself. My name is Baylor Meza, COO for uh, Glendo Kirk College as well. Um, and I just wanted to make a public comment relating to the, uh, the Brightwood Teach Out. Um, uh, that is ongoing. Um, we, we're really appreciative of the board's opportunity to step in and help uh, the Brightwood College teach out in San Diego. Uh, they have the daytime program and the only evening program in the area. Uh, you heard the update uh, about how it's going. We're as pleased as you are. We actually just received a text from Sherry today. We're pleased to say that we already have two NCLEX passers uh, on the first attempt. Um, three have taken it. We don't have the results on the third person yet. Uh, we're hoping that they pass as well. 
Um, we're, we're very uh, appreciative of all the regulatory support that goes uh, beyond the education committee of this board, the full board, the NECs that work tirelessly, the regulatory community that supported this teach out effort, and of course the faculty that, that hung in there unemployed for, I believe, uh, up to eight weeks before the teach out began to hang in there and help these, uh, these students. We're also appreciative that the board has now received an application from us for an ongoing um, program there and for its consideration and for um, you know, uh, a request for any expediency possible that within the board's power they can do so that we can not have to have another period of unemployment for the dedicated faculty that have hung in there and also for, to avoid the loss of clinical sites. So initial information on our application is in and we thank the board for its consideration and this committee as well. Thank you. Thank you. Any further public comment? And just a reminder that based on public comment, the committee may not discuss or take any action on any item raised during the public comment section. And that's according to government code sections 11125 and 11125.7a. Seeing no further public comment, we move to item nine, suggestions for future agenda items. Madam Chair, I just have one, and in particular, um, we've spoken a little bit about this in uh, our previous board meeting. Um, I would like to see, if possible, at the next uh, committee meeting, um, uh, some success stories of those schools and or students uh, to actually come and make a presentation to the committee um, based on the NEC's recommendations, um, as well as maybe some former students as well um, that can also um, present in front of the, uh, the board or the committee. I have a question. Did, are you talking about the Brightwood students, Mr. Maxey, or just in, I mean, what? Actually, I'm talking about just in general. I would like to see um, some participation and in, in from students that are currently in or in also some schools that are doing some great things um, so we can actually highlight them and show the, showcase them across the state of California so we can show what we've been doing as well as what those schools have been doing. So that's what I meant okay, by that. Okay, thank you. Other items? Seeing none, at this point, I call an end to this meeting. Thank you to everyone. We are now formally adjourned. Good, my pen just